Madam President, the fact of the matter is that TPP is just a new and easy way for corporations to ship jobs overseas and force Americans to compete with low-wage workers in Vietnam and other countries. And let us be clear and understand this. The minimum wage in Vietnam is 56 cents an hour, 56 cents an hour. And what this trade agreement says to American workers is you are now competing against people who in some cases will be working for 56 cents an hour. I think that that is grossly unfair. We should not force American workers into a race to the bottom. But, Madam President, let's be clear. The TPP is much more than a free trade agreement. It is part of a global race to the bottom to boost the profits of large multinational corporations and Wall Street by outsourcing jobs, undercutting worker rights, dismantling labor, environmental health, food, safety, and financial laws, and allowing corporations to challenge our laws in international tribunals rather than our own court system. The TPP is poised to be the largest free trade agreement in history, encompassing 12 nations that account for roughly 40 percent of the global economy. That is why it has been referred to as NAFTA on steroids. Incredibly, while Wall Street, the pharmaceutical industry, and major media companies have full knowledge as to what is in this treaty, the American people and members of Congress do not. They have been locked out of the process. While the full text of the TPP has not been made public, there have been some leaks of what is included in it. And what I have seen is very disturbing. It has been estimated by outside experts that the U.S. would lose more than 130,000 jobs to Vietnam and Japan alone if the TPP goes into effect. But that is just the tip of the iceberg. At a time when corporations have already outsourced over 3 million service sector jobs in the U.S., the TPP includes rules that will make it even easier for corporate America to outsource call centers, computer programming, engineering, accounting, and medical diagnostic, diagnostic jobs. So this is not just manufacturing jobs. There are all kinds of other jobs which, if they can be done cheaper in other countries, those jobs will be sent there. Under TPP, Vietnamese companies would be able to compete with American companies for federal contracts funded by U.S. taxpayers undermining by American laws. The TPP would undermine U.S. sovereignty by giving foreign corporations the right to challenge any law in this country that threatens their expected future profits before international tribunals. In other words, if we pass an increase in the minimum wage under the TPP, Vietnamese companies that invest in America could sue the United States in an international court full of corporate lawyers if they believe it would hurt their profits. And by the way, that is what this whole agreement is about, to maximize the investment profits of corporations from the United States and all over the world. And if localities, local governments, state governments, federal governments stand up and say, you know what, we want to protect health we want to protect the environment, and if that impinges on the future profits of a corporation, they, in fact, can take legal action against that uh, local, state, or federal entity. Uh, this may sound uh, kind of crazy, but that is exactly what has already happened in Egypt after it signed a free trade agreement with France. In 2012, a French utility company sued Egypt in an international tribunal. They sued him for 82 million dollars, 82 million euros. And what was Egypt's crime? 
What were they being sued for? They were being sued because they had increased their minimum wage, among other things. And the French company saw raising the minimum wage for Egyptian workers, which is very, very low, was an impingement on their ability to make profits. Further, big pharmaceutical companies, these large pharmaceutical companies, are working hard to ensure that the TPP extends the monopolies for their prescription drugs by extending patents that already can last for 20 years or more. Doctors Without Borders, which is a heroic organization of doctors who go to some of the most difficult, the poorest, uh, the most dangerous parts of this world to treat people who desperately need medical care, very brave people. They have written, and I quote, the TPP agreement is on track to become the most harmful trade pact ever for access to medicines in developing countries, end of quote. In other words, what the big pharmaceutical industry wants is for countries all over the world to have to pay top dollar for prescription drugs. They want to be able to maintain their patents for as long as possible and prevent uh, those drugs going generic where the prices would be significantly lower. The problem is, in poor countries, people cannot pay a whole lot of money for their prescription drugs. So if this agreement goes through and the pharmaceutical industry can force poor countries to pay high prices for prescription drugs, it means that people will suffer and people will die. Madam President, uh, I think after one disastrous trade agreement uh, after another, it is time for the American people and their elected officials to reassess how we do trade in America. It is time to say that we need trade agreements that work for working people in this country and not just trade agreements that work for the CEOs of large multinational corporations. It is time to say to corporate America, if you want us to purchase your products, it's time you started manufacturing those products here in the United States and not in low-wage countries all over the world. Madam President, the evidence is overwhelming. Our trade policies for decades have been responsible for lowering the standard of living of tens of millions of Americans. People today all over this country are working longer hours for lower wages. Most of the new jobs being created are low-wage jobs. Many of them are part-time jobs. We need to rebuild our manufacturing sector. And to do that, we need a fundamental revision in our trade policies. NAFTA has failed. CAFTA has failed. Permanent normal trade relations with China has failed. Korean trade agreement has failed. And it is basically insane to keep going with the same type of trade policy that has failed and failed and failed. And I hope very much that here in the Senate and in the House, we can defeat this trade agreement, this TPP, and come back to the table and develop a trade agreement that works for American workers, works for people all over the world, and not continue uh, these disastrous trade agreements. Uh, and with that, uh, Madam President, I would yield the floor.